Ladies and gentlemen, this is $99 and this is $7.99. Let's take a look at these two, well, LCD writing tablets. Let's compare them and see whether that drastic price difference is worth anything. All this and more on this review episode on 0612TV. Hello and welcome to another review video. Now, we'll head over to the brightly lit table of reviewing justice in a moment, but I do want to preface that today, this is not a fair scientific test by any stretch of the imagination. Essentially, we've got two, well, boogie boards here. This is an official boogie board and this is a no brand version that I've just bought online. The official one is clearly a lot more expensive. Uh, and for a good reason, right, it actually comes with a whole host of other things. It was bought off shelves, in fact it was bought from Toys R Us, so all of these things will contribute to that price. Whereas this one was bought online, this was the cheapest possible model I could find from that seller, and I didn't incur any shipping fees, because I went to the store itself to perform a self-collection. That's not to mention that it comes with nothing except the battery, so all of these things contribute to the lower price. That's why I said this isn't a fair test by any stretch of the imagination. So yeah, let's not get too carried away by the price point. Right, we've got to look at other things as well. With that said, let's delve into talking about these two bots themselves. In this video, I'll be covering quite a few points. But if you want to skip ahead, do pop open the video description. You will find timestamps there. Firstly, let's talk about what these bots even are in the first place. Essentially, these are writing bots, right? They come with, well, a surface like this, a stylus, and yeah, whatever you do, well, appears there, right? You can write stuff and it shows up there. The point is, well, you can keep it around for as long as you like, it doesn't consume power, until you say you want to erase. There is a button somewhere, you press it, and the screen clears itself. So, well, this is obviously some kind of LCD slash e-paper technology, and it's powered by a little battery, which is supposed to last years, because again, it's not consuming power until you press the clear button on the device itself. So that is a very short summary of what these devices do. Let's now take a closer look at each of these devices and see their similarities and differences. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the brightly lit table of reviewing justice, where again, we're looking at the $99 official bogey board in comparison to the $7.99 off-brand board. So here they are side by side under bright light. And well, at first glance, they actually look really, really beautiful, right? I think the, the writing in particular on a cheap one is actually really standing out. But I have to mention one thing, that's because there is actually a light over here, right? Just off screen on the right. Watch what happens when I switch it off. Yeah, not so fun now, huh? And there's another light on the left, if I cover it with my hand. Yeah, that's not interesting. So, I want you to go into this review with that in mind, alright? These, right, um, I guess because of their construction, they really like light from an off angle. That allows them to catch the light and it seems to glow really, really nicely. But, that is not what they look like under normal lighting conditions. So you do have to manage expectations a little bit. So with that out of the way, let's look at the bots themselves. And let's start with the more expensive one, which as you can imagine, is packed with more features. Firstly, the packaging itself. This actually ships in a large box, and this box comes with a bunch of things. In particular, there are a bunch of various cards that you can play around with. But before we look at that, we need to sort of see one feature about this first. And that is the fact that you can actually remove this from the backing, like so. And this is actually transparent underneath. Right, of course this still works in this state, right? I can pop up that pen here. Um, I can actually, you know, scroll my finger if I wanted to. That would work, right? This is a transparent surface that you could actually write on. So that's pretty cool. That's a feature that this has that the other definitely doesn't. So with this back, what you can do is you can replace it with a different back and you would be basically scrolling so-called on top of it. Obviously, you know, everything appears on the surface, right? So you can see if I tilt it, you can see that, well, that's the stuff on the surface. Interestingly, you can't see much from the back, right? But yeah, this is transparent 
and this allows you to have a whole host of special features by putting things underneath. The other doesn't have this feature, so just know that you know that's the difference. Of course, we could put this in the case, and um, for this, right, we actually have a black piece of paper in the background, and that increases the contrast of the display. So as you can see, right, it looks really pretty from this particular angle. And I suppose more interestingly, there are these additional pens. So I have them right here, right, and yeah, basically they can be used to well, do more things on this surface. So let's quickly demo this. I can actually clear this, right? And uh, let's use this one. It looks like a brush tip. And if I were to just go down on the surface, you can see that, well, this gives you a nice broad stroke, right? Definitely broader than the inbuilt stylus, which just gives you, you know, a simple straight line. I should note also that this is pressure sensitive to a certain extent. So if I were to draw lightly, you get a thin line. If I were to draw with a bit more pressure, you get a noticeably thicker line, right? And how you hold your pen, you know, the idea is that this is pressure sensitive, that's all. So yeah, that is this device in a nutshell, right? It is a board, you can draw on it, you can press a button, you can clear it. Now, let's take a look at the other device, right? The cheaper one that comes in at $7.99. Here it is, um, it's more or less the same size, right? But this one is a lot less feature-packed. In fact, it comes in a box like this. This is the only thing you get. There isn't even a brand on this box, actually. Right, all it says is easy to write, LCD writing tablet. And yeah, it tells you sort of, you know, what's available in it, and that's all. It doesn't come with anything else, right? None of these, you know, fancy pens and things like that. All you have is a stylus at the top, which sort of pops out like this, right? And again, it works the same way. You draw on it, you see a line. You press a button, everything disappears. Um, the only interesting additional feature that we have here is this little hole. It's actually for you to put the stylus through it, and then you can actually have it stand up like that. So yeah, if that's you know something you need, right? You can have it stand up vertically as well, um, and you can sort of set it up in any direction if that suits your fancy. Of course, if you put your stylus through there, then you can't really do anything on the surface. So yeah, that's, you know, pros and cons, right? So yeah, that's essentially this setup in a nutshell. It doesn't do a lot. So let's now put these two boards side by side and see how they work. I like how the colors are similar. This is a complete coincidence. So yeah, right off the bat, there are a few things slightly different between these two units, as well as some common flaws that they share. Firstly, let's talk about one very glaring difference. I'm going to use the same stylus, the stylus of this guy, right? I'm going to use the same amount of pressure and just draw a stroke on each one. So let's start with a stroke here. All right, and then let's do a stroke here. Right off the bat, I hope it comes off well on camera. You'll notice that the stroke on this guy, the cheaper one, is much, much thinner. Now, this can actually you know, create some issues, especially, you know, in low contrast situations like this, you will notice that, yeah, it's actually a little bit harder to see things on this when the light levels are low. This one, you get a nice, thick, generous line, right, which, well, even under low lighting conditions, you can still kind of vaguely see it, right? So I'm just cutting off the light here for you to see the difference. Ouch, I just burned my finger. Um, yeah, you get the idea, right? Thicker lines here, thinner lines here. Let's clear both of these. Second is the amount of pressure you actually need to get things to, well, work. Since these screens are pressure sensitive, we could technically use our hands. Now, I'm gonna start by using just a fingernail, right? And I'm gonna just, you know, lightly sort of draw a line here. You can see that that has worked fairly okay. And for this one, again, you do get a clear, thicker line. Now, instead of using my fingernail, I'm going to use just, you know, the soft part of my fingertip here. Firstly, on this one, you can vaguely see something actually drawn out, whereas for this one, no such luck. So this one has the more sensitive screen, is what I'm trying to say. You can see this as well with uh, one of the peripherals that came with this one, right? If I use this, I just drew a stroke like that, you'll see that we get a pretty nice line, whereas for this one, it's basically, you know, more or less unresponsive. What you get here are very thin lines that, well, really are barely 
visible. So yeah, I can try it three times. Both of these I use slightly less force. If I use less force here, well, this is still far more sensitive. So there are some pros to the more expensive model. Let's color the screens again and let's look at another difference. Now, I'm sure you'd have noticed, but this particular screen is actually multicolored. And I believe how they've done it is they just have, you know, the L LCD panel itself is already colored, right? Whereas this one, uh, well, I couldn't actually use this to do that. So let's just draw a line. This one is green all over, top to bottom. Is this a pro or a con? I don't know, right? That's really up to you um, and how you know, you're gonna actually use this. Now, in my case, I'm actually using this in a classroom context. So um, not having multiple colors actually increases my credibility. So that's a plus point, right? But that depends on your context. If you're getting a toy for a kid, this one is clearly more suitable, right? Because you have all your you know, various activities, you have all these extra stuff you could use and it's multicolored, which makes it just a tad more interesting. So those are some of the major differences between both of these in a nutshell. Now let's talk about some common flaws that they share. Now I've already shown you how, you know, under limited lighting, things don't look that great, right? So if I just add some text to both of these, right? Now, Again, if I were to take away the lighting on both sides, you can see that the text here is barely visible, right? Uh, the one on the left is vaguely visible through the room lights. So yeah, both of these have issues with contrast. You're gonna have to light it and you have to light it in a very specific way for it to come out well. For this one, right, this is the one that's actually mine. This is not mine, but uh, for this one, I use this in a classroom context with a document camera, you know, the kind with lights on the camera itself. And I actually have to position the lights at a very specific angle. Here is why. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my phone here. I'm gonna switch on the flashlight and just come in. This one is quite glaring. This one is far, far worse. So what this means is yes, you have to light the screen, but you have to light it in a very specific kind of position. You can see right now that well, things look really great. And again, that's because our lights are at an off angle. But if I were to bring this light closer here and I attempt to light it like that, yeah, no dice. It actually sort of, you know, washes out the screen. Um, you know, again, depending on my angle, it may create a giant glare like this, right? Same idea for this guy, but slightly less obviously. Because the screen on this one is quite glossy, even if you create a glare, it's a small one. It's a tiny concentrated one like so, right? Whereas this one has a matte screen. So what you have is a giant diffuse glare that hits your text, right? Even if your text is far away. So again, that is another drawback of these devices. Uh, more so on the cheaper one than on the, you know, Boogie Board official branded one. And here's the elephant in the room. No erasure. That's right. If I made a mistake, I couldn't erase it. Right, there's no way to erase any of the content on the screen. And this is a common flaw to both. Again, I could only, well, cancel it out and you know have it look really ugly. I don't know, right? You get the idea. There is no way to erase any content on these screens. And I guess that is one of the design flaws of this. You have to clear the whole thing before you can continue. So yeah, that's the key problem. In fact, I would go so far as to say this is the main and biggest problem of these sort of boards. You cannot erase. You can only just write stuff and if it's wrong, you can strike it out, but you cannot erase. So yeah, that is sort of the pros and cons of these two boards. So let's finally come down to, well, my thoughts on the pricing itself. Again, this is $99 and this is official, right? This is the Boogie Board brand one and this one, is $7.99, right? And this one is the off-brand version. Which would I choose? Actually, that is, well, fairly obvious, right? Clearly, I'll take the off-brand one any day. And the reason why that is so is not only because it's cheap, but in terms of its core features, these two aren't all that different. Sure, Things look a little bit prettier for this one because of the thicker stroke. That is something that I really, really miss on the cheap one. But other than that, 
for all intents and purposes, they are the same. They work equally well, they have similar flaws, but this one is orders of magnitude cheaper. That's not to say that this is a poor product. That's to say that I don't use most of the additional features that come with this product. Of course, not all of this price goes towards the board itself, right? Some of it goes towards, you know, things like this um, and other stuff. There's also an app for this one, even though I don't have any luck uh, in getting it to work correctly. So yeah, some of this cost obviously goes elsewhere. But if what you're looking for at the end of the day is just a writing tablet, something you could use to take notes uh, and not a fully fledged toy, then look for the off-brand ones. I think these are, you know, just more worth the cost. Neither of these are perfect. They have some big glaring flaws, but having a cheap price point like this one just makes it, you know, I guess more forgivable is what I'm trying to say, more okay. So yeah, there you have it. These are our sort of two boogie boards at two very different price points compared. Again, this is not a boogie board, it's an off-brand. So yeah, scour the net, right? And see if you can find a cheap knockoff that does, well, roughly the same thing. That's basically all there is for this review. Again, I'm not bashing the official product. I'm just saying this one is more suitable for my needs. That's all there is for this particular video. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.